so the story takes place in 2007. It was and still is the only paranormal experience I have ever had. I was working at a TV station in a small town. I'm not going to say which one but you may be able to figure it out with the details I provide. Don't really give a damn if you want to try to figure it out. I worked as a master control operator on the late shift. The station I worked in was creepy as hell for a couple reasons. Firstly, the building was old as hell. A lot of the structure of the building used for storage and the area where the transmitter was, was just in absolutely horrible condition. Cracks in walls, broken lights, exposed wiring, act. In retrospect it was probably actually pretty dangerous. The other reason this building was so creepy was that at one point in the 70s, it burned down. And it was rumored that several people died in the fire. I have never been able to confirm this, though I've been told specific names of the deceased. Being the cheap bastards the family that owned the place were, instead of rebuilding ALL of the building, they kept part of the thing that stayed up and rebuilt a new part onto the remaining standing part. When I worked there, the original part of the building was now entirely condemned and all but falling down. There were two floors of the original building, a huge room that used to be a bowling alley, and an upstairs part that was used entirely for storage of old files and records. Now, I don't know exactly why there was a bowling alley as part of the old TV station, but I also know that they used to do a local wrestling show there as well. I guess TV stations just did weird stuff in the 70s, anyway. This condemned portion of the building was the creepiest part of it. The bowling alley was frozen in time. Covered in dust, everything is still there. I even found old scorecards in shoe cubbies. When I went exploring there on the nights and weekends, pick related. It's the station. The bowling alley was completely cut off from power. It had no light except for sunlight through dusty windows and cracks in the wall. At night, a flashlight was the only light in that pitch black ass area. It was creepy. The only noises heard there were sounds of dripping water. It's worth mentioning that it was pretty much an unspoken rule that everyone understood that we weren't supposed to go in there. The only two doors to access it were behind the front desk and through a locked door in the copy room. I was like 18 at the time, I didn't give a damn. I went back there when I was alone or when the skeleton crew was working. Sometimes me and some production and news people would go back there and explore, like I said. This place was frozen in time. Upstairs, along with the files, we found boxes of old records. I like music records, Michael Jackson LPs and such. Stuff that might have been worth some money. There were plenty of reasons to take people exploring over there. So, that's some history. Onto the experience. I was working the sign-off shift one night as usual. The usual procedure was that at midnight, everyone except master control ducked off, production, the remaining engineer, and the news people all left around midnight. I was generally alone in the building until 2 to 3 a.m. until the station signed off. On this particular night, my buddy came up to the station to hang out with me. We'll call him Dan for convenience sake. I had people come chill up there pretty often. Friends liked checking out the station, and there wasn't nothing to do but kill time. So it's about midnight and me and Dan are chilling watching whatever stupid stuff was on air at the time, likely Bones or Family Feud or something gay. I start telling him about the bowling alley. I hype some stuff up about how the people that died in the fire haunt that area and decide we can go ghost hunting. Pick, control room, it will come in handy in a later post for orientation. So I decide it's safe to let the automation just run for a while and we can leave the control room and go exploring. I take Dan or Dave or whatever the hell his name is for a tour around the outside of the building. First, showing him how ducked up it is. There were literally transmission lines going up to the tower that were held up on supports built on crumbling sheetrock. There was a sticker on a door that was bolted shut to the bowling alley that read, Watch for overhead wires you can be killed. God damn that place was jank. Anyway, I give Dan the usual tour I've given to like 5 people by now. Usually it was bitches because bitches love a brave man in a scary as hell place. We go back there with flashlights and the walkie-talkies and the whole time we're trying to contact spirits of the deceased with our walkie-talkies. Listening for voices, interference, ETC. Didn't really get anything but some static, but it's a TV station what did I expect. We were back there for probably all of a half an hour and we went back to the control room too. Resume being lazy? Some time goes by and a walkie-talkie that I had left on started making some pretty fucked up noises. Definitely sounded like a really deep and statusy voice. Didn't think much of it because once again, TV station, lots of equipment, signals, humored this and tried to talk to what or whoever it was, push button and talk into make asking if anyone is there. Keep hearing something, but indistinguishable. Now the set of walkie talkies made that very generic sound every time you pushed the button to talk. After a few minutes of trying to talk to what I thought was nothing, the walkie talkie started making that noise all on its own. What the hell? Maybe the dude on the other end is trying to use Morse or something because we can't hear each other very well, pick up the mic and talk and say if you can hear me beep once for yes. 
We grab the second walkie-talkie and tune it to the same channel and nothing is happening. Not only is this only happening to one walkie-talkie, but we cannot make the second walkie-talkie simulate that same noise on the other. Pushing the button is literally the only way to get the thing to make that noise. This was the first moment when I went into okay maybe something is actually happening here mode. Start asking things like is anyone there beep once, if you can hear me beep once. If you're in the building beep once, it would beep once every single time. Also, it would not beep if you didn't say anything. It literally only responded when prompted. It was not Dan messing with me. He was right next to me in plain view. The other walkie talkie was off. Set walkie talkie down on the table. No one is touching it. Say out loud, if anyone can hear me, beep once. A dot nope dot mother ducking JPG. Dan and I ran out of the room. We searched the newsroom, studio, hallways, bathrooms, transmitter rooms, offices, parking lot, everywhere for people, no one. I got up to the entry room where the front desk, bowling alley door was. Bowling alley door is wide open. I closed and locked, I always did, every time. This is where I began to go into panic and events are a little less clear. Pick. Another shot of the control room conveniently with the ring picture up. This can be seen in last pick too. Dan and I headed back to the control room and shut all the doors so no one could hear inside the room. Walkie talkie lay silently on the desk by the board. Ask again if it's in there. Ask if it can see me. Decide that maybe someone could still be tricking me and is listening in on me somehow. Decide to see if this thing can really see me. I stand in front of the board and face the monitor wall. If I'm facing the monitor wall beep twice. No. Way. This was the first time this thing had beeped twice. I turn 180 degrees. If I'm facing the monitor wall beep twice, if I'm facing the rack beep once. I didn't believe it. I tested it again and again and again. Turning to different orientations and asking for different numbers of beeps. It got it right. Every. Single. Time. I'm panicked. It's now like to 20 AM and I haven't logged break times for over an hour. I can no longer do my. Job. I am so terrified. At some point, Dan and I just accept that we are in contact with something otherworldly. I asked if it came out of the bowling alley. It did. I asked if it died in the fire. It did not. I asked if there was a god. It said there was. Now. Last time I told this story people said heard or your story was good until you got to this part. Confirmed for fake FGT. I don't really care. I'm not going to omit it cause it happened. As I am shifting into this new and terrifying worldview based on the experience I'm having. I ask if there is a hell. Are you in hell? On a scale of 1 to 10 by number of beeps. How bad is hell? It wouldn't stop. I start crying. I don't remember how many times it beeped before it finally stopped. I tried to calm down. And pretty much at this point ignore the walkie talkie and stop asking questions and start. We're playing with Dan and trying to come up with explanations and catch up with my work. It's getting close to sign off time so I start with my close up shop procedures, etc. As I'm shutting some stuff off and talking to Dan. This thing starts beeping in series of three. Just three, pause, three, pause, over and over. Start trying to determine and ask it some important of three. It's like to 45 am. Three o'clock. Sign off. No. Is something going to happen at three o'clock? Screw this. There is no way I'm going to be in this building. I set up the automation to automatically go to color bars after the national anthem and just go ahead and turn off the transmitter 15 minutes early. Screw this walkie talkie. Turn it off and throw it on the charger. Dan and I go outside into the parking lot. He leaves. 3 a.m. comes. Nothing happens. Wait and see what happens because I have to go back inside to load the next day's playlist. Nothing. At like 3.02 I decide, scared as hell, to go back inside as I'm walking back towards the door. I hit the deck after I heard an air shattering. And then the sound of something electrical like shorting out. The huge boom came from our main network receiver dish. The thing is like 30 feet in diameter and up on a huge robotic tripod. The thing somehow slipped out of lock and literally fell with all its weight, collapsing to the bottom position, facing the ground. I call my boss, the chief engineer immediately. Tell me he'll be there immediately. He lives right up the street so he'll be there in like two minutes. Follow the sound of the shorting out sound. Find that between the building and the sheetrock wall. A transmission line broke and is completely unrelated to the dish falling. That sticker about overhead wires was not lying. Boss shows up. Tell him I was outside smoking when the thing fell. He proclaims. I have never seen anything like this before. We go in together to the sound of alarms related to the dish. I tell him about the transmission line. Tell him the next day's guy will have to do the playlist because damn you I'm leaving. He literally does not give a damn and has bigger fish to fry. I get in my truck and hit the road. 
I call my buddy William who is always up late as hell to tell him about what happened. As I am going over the events with him, out of the earpiece of the phone. And I kid you not, it goes and will hurt it too. This is exactly how it happened. Sorry if some of you don't like it because it isn't nice and tidy and perfect like you're made up. Skinwalker pastas, but this is how it went down. I still can't explain it to this day, and I never tell anyone because people fucking laugh. I come to tell X, and some of you will still bitch about it. Well file this story away under true pasta because I did not just type all of this stuff to just be dismissed. We'll be happy to answer questions if anyone has any. Pick in the control room using panorama.